Okay, we're going to take the ideas of a system of linear equations and we're going to expand it to three variables. So if you remember in our last lesson, a system of linear equations was that you've got a system of lines. They exist in the same universe. So two lines exist on the same graph. And what we want to do is see where they hit each other. Well, if you are moving it to three variables, what we start to have is planes. Let me see, do I have, yeah. So this is a system of planes. So you've got x, y's, and z variables all in the same system. So those are making planes that are three-dimensional. So we're looking to see where they intersect each other. Now, it is possible that they don't intersect each other at all. It's possible they intersect each other on a line. So there's a lot of combinations. We'll see some of the possibilities as we go through here. Okay, now what makes this extremely difficult is that we're going to do the same idea that we did in the last lesson, but we're going to have to do it multiple times in order to try to get rid of one of the variables. So we know how to handle two idle nodes. Now, we have three though. So what we're going to try to do is do our elimination. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to slide ahead. Well, let me tell you the, the point. We're going to try to eliminate one of the variables from two equations so that we return to having what we did last time, two equations with two variables. Now, just like we saw in the last lesson, the first question to answer is, is this point a solution to a system to the system? And if that were true, you could plug in this. Now, this is an x, y, and z, so x, y, and z point this time. So just like we normally have an x, y point, now it's x, y, and z. We're going to plug those values in to each of the equations. And if it makes each of them true, well, it's a point on that plane. Well, if it's on all three of them, it must be a point where they intersect. So here we've just plugged in. We're replacing x with 3, y with negative 2, and z with 1. Makes the first one true. We do it again. Make sure you sub in with, with parentheses. You multiply all that out. The second one is true. You plug it into the third. You get it to be true once again. So this is a solution to the system. All right, now let's start doing, this is, oh, I thought I'd slice that up. Um, let's take a look at here. This is what I meant, where we're going to try to narrow this system. I've got three equations. They all have x, y's, and z's. What I'm going to try to do is use my elimination approach to get rid of one of the idle nodes. Now, we could do this any way we want, but so do you see these first two are perfectly set up for elimination? I could just add those together and I'd immediately get rid of the x. Okay, so now we have an equation that only has y's and z's. Okay, now let's take two different equations. You can't use the same two, obviously, but now we're going to take, let's see, what are we doing here? We're taking the first equation and the third equation and we need to eliminate for the very same variable so we're taking down here we're taking the first one and what we've done is we've run it through by a negative two so i've run negative two through this equation right here okay so i've run a negative two through there and now we're going to add it to the third equation and look what happens we've eliminated the the x's from this one so here's what we've done all of that just to turn it into a problem like before. I now have just y's and z's in each of these equations. I have two of them. You need one equation for every I don't know. Well, I have that. And now we're ready to just do what we did last time. Hold on, I think something got lost here. Okay, so I don't know if they jumped this or... So I have these two equations, and I'm just going to add them up. Now these are z's and 2's look a little difficult here, but so if I just added these, I'd be left with z equals 2, because the y's would go. That's just super convenient. It isn't always that easy. Okay, but now I know z is 2, I can plug it into one of the two equations I had here. Either of these will work, the ones in the boxes. I plug that in, I get y is negative 1. And now I have two I don't knows, so let's plug those back in to any of the original equations, and we can find x. So any of these original equations, now that we know, 
z and y. Okay, and we have our solution. So there was my x, there was my y, and there's my z. I've got them as a ordered triple. All right, now I think this is hard enough. I, I probably wouldn't give you a problem like this, but I want to show you what they're doing here. So he's got three funds. He's got a money market, a bond, and a mutual fund. So we have three funds, and his total amount of investment is 12000 So we've got an equation there. Now, we know that in his mutual funds, he has 4000 more than he has in the bonds, so we can make a second. And now this one, we need a third equation because we have three idle no's. So we've got the interest he's making in each of these accounts and his annual interest. And we then could set up our third account, our third equation. All right, so this now turns into the problem like the first one. We've got three equations. Let's deal with this bottom one. I don't like all those decimals. So I would multiply it through by, what would, what would it be? We needed 100. So our greatest decimal place is the hundredth place. So we'd multiply through by 100. And we create this. Okay, now all of that is just the setup. We need to get rid of one variable f from two equations. We need two equations that eliminate a variable. So let's see what we've done. A um, couple ways you could do this. Okay, that's nothing. So Hold on, I'm trying to find out what they're doing. I don't know what, which way they're going with this. Oh, okay. Are they trying to get rid of Z here? Okay, so they're running a negative three through this first guy. Hold on, I don't see what they're doing. Give me a second here. Okay, it didn't make sense because it, looking it over, it still doesn't make sense. So we're just going to do this myself. All right, so we're going to look at these first two. And if I look at these first two, I could eliminate the Y. So I'm going to add the first one and the second. So I'm going to get these. I have the Y's already set up for elimination. So I'm going to have X plus 2Z equals 16,000. Okay, now what we want to do is create another one that eliminates the y. So I'm going to take, yeah, I'm going to take the second one and the third one. Now I'm going to run a, a 4 through this second one and I would get negative 4y plus 4z equals 16,000. Now this bottom one is 3x plus 4y plus 7z equals 67,000. Okay, I'm doing this because I want another equation that gets rid of the y. Okay. Now, I have two equations where I am down to x and just z. So now we've turned this into a problem from the last lesson where we can just work with these two to eliminate. Now, I'm going to run a neg. So now, just like before, these two are set up. Well, let me show you so I don't go too fast. So we're going to run here. Do you see running a negative 3 through this one would be a good choice? That would allow me to get rid of the x's and then I'll have the z's. So I'm going to do this right here because otherwise it makes it too much. I'm going to make this negative 3x, negative 6z, and then I'm going to use my calculator on that. Oh, I should have known that, I think. Okay, and then this would become negative 48,000.
All right, now I'm going to combine them. My x's are going to be gone. I've got 5z equals 35,000. And I've got z is 7,000. OK, now I have one of the I don't knows. So now that I have it, I can use this information. This one is pretty easy. You can put it back into any equation you want. Um, well, let's go ahead and do that. I see an easier way up top. So I'm going to put the z back into this one. You can use any one of the equations you want. OK, so this will be 14,000. If I multiply those, swing them to the other side, x is going to be 2,000. OK, so I have two of them. I can use this in any equation I want to find the y. You could do this multiple ways, but I've got 2,000. I'm using the first equation, 2,000 plus 7,000 plus z equals 12. So this would be 9,000. So z is going to be, or I'm sorry, I was supposed to be solving for y. Hold on, I'm sorry. Let me do this again. So I was putting 2,000 in for x. I don't have y. And z was 7,000. OK, so I get these. It's 9,000. Swing it over. y is going to be 3,000. Sorry, 3,000. So here's my solution. 2,000, 3,000, 7,000. Okay, um, these are so time consuming, this make a super long video, but let me just, I'm going to just get them down to the, where it becomes like the last video. So I'm trying to eliminate the I don't know from two of the equations. So here's a good one. I'm going to do the first one and the last one, and I'm going to run a 2 through the top. Do you see that'll create a 2y and a negative 2y? So I'm going to have 4x plus 2y minus 4z equals negative 2. Now I'm going to add it to this bottom one. All right, I've got 5x's plus, oh, sorry, 5x's minus 1z equals 4. Okay, so I have that to one equation. I've got rid of the y. I've got an equation with just x's and z's. Well, let's do it again. I'm going to take the top one again and the middle one this time. I'm going to run a 3 through the top, and I would get 6x plus 3y minus 6z equals negative 3. I just ran a, ne a 3 through there. And the reason I did that was so that I would create opposites there. OK, now I've once again eliminated the y if I add this up. I've got 9x minus 7z is 2. Okay, now this is still not easy to pick it up from here, but we have two equations. It becomes like the other one, and there's these are super time consuming. So I'm going to stop there. What you would do next is I would eliminate probably my z by running maybe a negative 7 through this one. Then once you have the x, you can plug it back in to find the z, and then once you have the x and the z, plug it into any of these. OK, now what's going to happen here is what we saw in the last video. This is going to break. Now I'm going to jump ahead to the punchline here. They start doing this, trying to eliminate the x's from the equation. And eventually, they get it down to where they're trying to work on the y's, and everything disappears. And they're left with 0 equals 2. Well, that's not true. So there's no solution. Do you remember if what's left with no variables is not true, it's no solution. It means they must not intersect. So no solution here. And if you were left with something that tells the truth, that means the lines must be on top of each other and it would be infinite solutions. So all the I don't knows fell out and we were left with a lie, so no solution. I don't know why that has a fee in there. <laughs> I'm assuming that's supposed to be a plus. Um, I don't know what to do with that one. Well, I don't know if I should work this or not, because I don't know if that's the right problem. I don't know why that says this. 
Um, I'm, I'm guess I'm going to skip this. What I'm assuming is going to happen is that we're going to get this to another contradiction. It's not going to be true. Hold on, maybe if, let's see if this is supposed to be a one. Okay, so I'm going to run a negative two through this top one and then add it to the bottom so that we can get it down to Okay, now if I put these together, I get negative y plus 3z equals negative 4. Yeah, I think this was supposed to be a minus sign. So I think what the point was here is they wanted this to drop out. So I think that's supposed to be y minus 3z. Okay, so if I tried to join it together with y minus 3z equals 1, I would get 0 equals negative 3, which is not true, and you would get no solution. Okay, now they're going to show you a clever trick here. I um, I am not a big fan of this. I uh, It's a pretty advanced thing to do, and I don't know that it's all that necessary. But so if they run through a negative 2 into the first equation, we're immediately going to get 0 equals 0. So everything dropped out, and so we know this is infinite solutions. Now, what they're going to do is try to show us a way that you can see that all of this can be dependent on one of the variables. I would not put this on a test, um, but it is pretty common in higher math, so I'll just show you what they're doing here. Okay, so they're finding, how did they do this? Okay, so they put the first and third equations together and they got this. Okay, just elimination, just by doing the first and the third. And you'll see the y's would instantly drop out and you get this. Okay, well now they're going to solve that equation for z. And what they're showing you is that z can actually be expressed in terms of x, that it is dependent upon x. Okay, now they're going to put that back in so if this is what z is, they're going to put that in. They're going to sub it back in. And then we now just have two I don't knows. What equation are they putting this in? Back into the first one, it looks like. So we know z, so they're plugging that back in. We tidy this up, and we get this. They solve that for y, and now we have y in terms of x as well. Okay, so what they're trying to show you is that we can represent that this function all depends on any value you put in for x. If you pick an x, then the y is going to be 5 halves of that, and the z is going to be 3 halves of that. So, again, I only really care about the fact you find that if 0 equals 0, this means infinite solutions. But here what they're doing is showing you that you can solve the z and the y in terms of x to show that they are dependent upon the value that you pick for x. Um, okay, do I want to do another one of these? Let's do this. Um, yeah, let's do this. So I'm going to run a 2 through this top. Oh, actually. Yeah, I don't know if, I don't know what they're doing on this one. So I'm going to run a negative 2 through this one so I can add it to the middle. So I've got negative 2x minus 2y minus 2z equals negative 14. And then we're going to join it to that middle one. Oh, 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 sorry, I'm already wrong. We need to go a positive 2 so that we set up the opposites there. So I'm running a positive 2 through this top one. 2x plus 2y plus 2z is 14. We've got 3x minus 2y minus z equals 4. Okay, we add those up. We're going to get 5x plus 1z equals 18. All right, now we've eliminated y. Let's do it again. We're going to run a 3 through this middle one and then add it to the bottom. That would get me 9x minus 6y minus 3z equals 12. So I get 9x, oh, I am sorry, I keep, okay, so that was my top one. I'm putting these two together. So I'm going to get 9x minus 6 minus 3z equals 12. 
and this bottom one was already fine. We did this so we would have opposites on the y's. Okay, so we're going to get 10x plus 2z equals 36. Now, we have this down to two equations. So here's what's going to happen. If you run a negative 2 through here, we're going to get these will be opposites. Can you already see that? If I run a negative 2 through here, I'm going to get 10x minus 2z minus 36. So if I add those up, I'm going to get 0 equals 0. Okay, so what they would have done is they would have finished this up to show us that we can say that uh, z depends on x. We could have solved this for z and we said so what I would want is infinite solutions here. That's what I would care about. Now if you wanted to see this in terms how z depends on x, you could then take this and sub it into, if this is what z is, so z depends on x, you could then sub that into equation up here with a z and we could find how y depends on x. I guess I might as well do it and then we'll be done with this video. Okay, we're going to tidy this up. We get negative 4x plus 18 plus y equals 7. I'm going to solve this for y. All right, so here's what we've got. So what I care about is this. And again, I don't think I would test you on this, but if you want to know, we have this system. where the other two points always just depend on what value you've selected for x. Okay, that's really burdensome. And uh, in class, often I show an easier way to do this with matrices. I'm not sure if I will have time to make a video for that. I might. Um, but that should get you started. We're going to eliminate a variable from, from two of the equations, and then it turns into the work that we did last time.